Okay, that is 1 p.m. British summer, uh, sorry, uh, GMT, we're, uh, we're out of summertime now. Um, welcome traders to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Before we get going, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. And most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They are not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. For those of you who are here for the first time, a very brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some time to play with, uh, with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriate at that stage, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, eventually giving back all my gains and ultimately taking a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. To say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible to, for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing uh, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, and most importantly, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But probably most importantly, during that period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal oriented individual focused really on financial gains to becoming purely process oriented. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand and truly accept the nature of trading in terms of it being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcomes of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns, the results of which you can see on the screen. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, and also resident market experts exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup analysis delivered through the Ticknell Trading View account. I'll post a link for that at the end of today's presentation. And Mo, well, most recently, within the last year anyway, I have uh, been tasked with running Tickmill's e-mini Facebook strategy group where I post a daily trade plan outlining my pre-market thoughts and uh, trade plan for the cash trading session in New York for the S&P 500 or the e-mini futures contract. I give my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 5,500 points of profit since we launched the group uh, just over 
18 months ago now. Uh, the second tick mill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The tick mill uh, futures telegram trading group is in a real time environment where on a daily basis, I share in-depth insights, analysis, and trades. I also provide live market commentary during the opening hour of the New York cash trading session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets, and most importantly, those mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of wherever it is I'm coming from. Let's jump into the charts. Before we do, I would as always say that if you have any questions, just throw them into the chat and I'll come back to them at the end of the presentation. Equally, if you have an instrument you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover in my deck, again, just drop that in the chat and at the end of the presentation, I'll come back and give you a view. So starting as always with the equity markets, we, uh, we were looking for further upside last week after a corrective phase and that uh, that has played out uh, we broke out of our trend channel resistance through that 3970 area and we've extended to the upside uh, i'm long the s p at the moment and i'm looking for this target level to get tested 4120 to 4130 is the upside objective now from there uh, especially if that occurs into the back end of this month I'm going to uh, I'm going to take a more defensive stance, and I'm actually going to be looking for short positions as we head into this weekly trend line resistance. Here, I think we've got another leg to the downside before uh, before this washout is complete in terms of these equity indexes. So long at the moment, looking for any pullbacks into the 4015 area. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there as an opportunity to add to long positions, or if you're not long, to engage on the long side, looking for that test up into the 4120, 4130 area. Now, obviously, um, if we take out the trends line support here, then we'd be looking for a deeper corrective move to play out. And I'd be looking for moves down into the 3960, 3980 area. Again, watch for bullish reversal patterns there, engage on the long side. And um, so that's those are some of the levels I'm tracking in terms of the S&P 500 or the E-mini S&P 500. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ has been the weakest, as I mentioned last week, out of the three equity indexes. We were looking for a pullback into support at the 50, uh, 11,530 area. That played out with a nice outside reversal yesterday. and ex We're extending to the upside. What I'm looking for now with the NASDAQ is that we trade into the trend channel resistance here on the weekly time frame. That comes in at 12,520. And we're in this channel here. So let's just adjust our target. So what we are looking for now with the NASDAQ, whilst we hold this channel support here, we're looking for an upside extension into that 12,500 target zone. I would anticipate we get a pullback here, or at least a correction from that uh, 12,200, that trend channel resistance. Like I say, we're looking for a move up into that weekly trend line resistance. So let's just see what we could get here. So I'd anticipate any pullbacks into the 11,760. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. And we're targeting then an extension up into the target zone here of 12,000. 500. Now, from there, I will be paying close attention on the daily time frame. Any daily rejection from actually the uh, let's just make sure we've got the right level there for you guys. And yeah, 12,500, just below 12,400. 12,500 is the target zone uh, where I'm looking for reversals to engage on the short side in terms of the NASDAQ. Now, obviously, with these equity indexes, the, the the levels I'm giving you today, you want to pay attention as you as we trade to these on the daily time frame with the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, all of these, because if we get daily closes outside of these trend channel resistances, then we can have an upside extension. I'll be uh, reviewing that if that occurs and I'll update levels uh, via the, uh, the Ticknell TradingView account uh, if that happens. But at this stage, I'm anticipating We've come a long way in a relatively short period of time here, and I'm looking for at least a pullback versus the, the advance that we've seen so far now. The Dow Jones is an interesting one. It's coming up into that resistance area that we talked about. The Dow has actually taken out its trend channel resistance on a weekly time frame. That's noteworthy. But um, this 34,300, 34,300, 34,400 is going to be a key test 
uh, for the Dow, and I'd be anticipating a pullback uh, from that level. At a minimum, we look to correct against the advance that we've seen here uh, on the daily time frame. So we would be thinking about a move to correct. Let's just remove that and get a level to look at. So I'd be thinking at a minimum, as we trade up into that uh, 30, 34,370. 34, so what we would look for here is another leg to the upside into that target zone. And then from there, I would be thinking at a minimum, we could see a correction equal in scope and scale to this last corrective phase here. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. So we would look for at a minimum, um, certainly, and one of the important aspects of trading any counter trend corrective move here is going to be that we get some momentum divergence in play at the moment. We don't have that. So that's why I'm thinking we still do grind higher and test this 34,370. From there, what's for bearish reversal patterns? Uh, first target is going to be the high volume node, as always, 33,660. And then if we can get through there, we're looking for an equality test. Uh, versus the last major corrective leg, which will give us 33,110. And then from there, we reassess uh, and see what the price action gives us. Uh, the Russell <clears throat> sitting at its weekly trend line resistance at this stage. Don't really have a clear uh, trading pattern there with the, uh, the Russell at this point. We will be watching to see. Really, I'd be taking. We'd be taking the lead from the uh, from the majors, the uh, S and P, the the Dow, and the um, and the Nasdaq. I don't really have a clear trading pattern as such at the moment in the Russell, from my approach anyway. Dax is looking to complete a five wave sequence into this uh, target. Now it's fourteen thousand nine hundred and ninety five. So just below. Uh, just below that 15,000 level. So what we were, we're starting to see already here, and this is what we like to see in terms of playing these corrective moves, get some momentum divergence developed. So any push up into this zone now, watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, the initial target is going to be the trend line support here. So let me just draw in what I'd be anticipating we see. Um, so we look for a move up into this target zone at the 14,900, uh, just below the 15,000 level. Watch for bearish reversal patterns there. We engage on the short side. First target is going to be a pullback into 14,400. And then from there, we'll reassess the price action. So looking for an upside extension into that 40, late 14,900, just below 15,000. And there, bearish reversal patterns we engage on the short side. And we're looking for 14,400 as the first target on the downside for a corrective move. Nikkei. Starting to form a nice wedge here. So what I'm looking for with the Nikkei is that we get a test of the weekly trend line resistance coming in 28,830. So this is the type of pattern that I anticipate plays out. You get that move up into that zone. We watch a bearish momentum divergence, bearish reversal patterns. First target on the downside is going to be the high volume node, 27,930 with respect to the Nikkei. Nifty, pretty into our support area that we were tracking last week, 18,157. And we're now getting that extension. So our target for the fifth wave extension to the upside is 18,800. And uh, sorry, 18,694. From there, we're watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. And again, what I'd look for here in terms of the nifty, let's just draw this in for you guys. <clears throat> we're going to look for something similar in scope and scale to that wave two move. So we get up into that target zone, we watch bearish reversal patterns. And then what we're looking for is a minimum a three wave corrective move into test that symmetry swing support. So we look for something like this to play out as the first setup. So we're watching for a move into that 18,600, 18,700 level bearish reversal patterns. As long as we don't make a new high in terms of momentum and we engage on the short side, 
first target to the downside is going to be that uh, symmetry swing objective, 18,180. Moving to TLT, the bonds, 20 year. Hit our target from last week, 102.85s. That worked out nicely. So what I'm looking for now is a test of trend line resistance in the weekly time frame towards that 105, just above 105 from there. Watch for bearish reversal patterns. And similarly, what we've got now, the, 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 the tradable information that we get from this move so far in TLT, because we've exceeded the 161 extension of this initial swing structure, that to me is, uh, in, gives me uh, a decent clue that this move is now starting to look impulsive. So what we're looking for ultimately is a wave three high to develop. And then we're looking for a three wave corrective move, wave four. And then we buy that wave four low. I'm anticipating at this stage, if we hold trend line resistance at 105, we're going to pull back back into just below the 100 level from there. Bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a five equals one, taking us up to monthly projected range resistance at the 106 level. So that's a nice setup that I'm going to be tracking. And, uh, and I'll update that in the uh, through the trading view account. Dollar index. <clears throat> So we traded into, let's just remind ourselves what we were talking about last week. We were looking for a three-wave corrective move to test into the uh, 108.20s. We came shy of that yesterday. And obviously with the um, with the, new, uh, the FOMC looking like they're prepared to, uh, to pause the, at least the rate of rate increases in the US, we broke down through trend channel support at the 106.60s. So we're now looking for our target level, 104.30s on the downside. Now, this is an important dynamic to pay attention to in terms of the markets at the moment. What we want to ideally want to see is we want to see that those uh, equity indexes, certainly the S&P 500, testing that 41.20, 41.30 area as the dollar index tests its target of the 104.30s. Because more often than not, what we'll see in terms of correlation is that as the dollar is declining, equity markets are advancing. So it's risk on, risk off. Risk, uh, money going in, money coming out of risk markets and into the dollar when we, markets are declining, and money coming out of the safe haven dollar into risk markets when we've got a risk on sentiment. So this pattern is going to be key that I'm going to be watching how this dynamic plays out. Because if we're testing this 104 area, as we get those equity markets testing that uh, the 4120, 4130, that's going to be a nice, nice confirmation because if the dollar reverses from this target zone, that's going to fuel that move that we anticipate in terms of these equity markets. It's going to be paying really close attention to that 104 area on the downside, uh, 104, 105 in terms of the dollar index. So similarly then with the euro, we were looking for an upside extension last week. We've got it. So what we're looking for is the euro to test this 106 weekly trend line resistance. So if we get the euro testing the 106, we get the dollar index testing 104, 105, and that 4120, 4130 in the S&P, you can start to see how this, this, this synchronicity in the market here. So if we get rejected from the 106 trend line resistance, rejected from 4120, and we hold that 104 in the dollar, then there are some definite chunky trades to... Uh, play out here. Now, again, like I said, we want to pay attention because if we start to get a daily closes through the 106, through 107, daily closes through 4120, 4130 in the S&P, then that means we are going to see a rally more likely than not into year end. So that's another important aspect to, uh, to pay attention to. Sterling traded up nicely. We were looking for an advance from that 17, uh, 1780, 1750 area. So we broke, we traded to our target zone, 120.50 achieved. So I'm looking for any pullback now equal to this move here into test the 1990, 1960 area support. Watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. Next target for me is going to be weekly projected range resistance, 122 in terms of sterling on the upside. And from there, I think we can see a bit of a pullback at least. Yeah, look, um, on the daily time frame, we could actually set up uh, nicely here for an inverse head and shoulders scenario. So if we trade up into that 122, we get a pullback. What I'd ideally like to see then would be a, uh, a three-way corrective move. Here we are on the daily chart, obviously. So we're going to pull back something like this into test then that ascending trend line support for the next leg to play out to the upside in terms of sterling. You can see, let me just draw that in for you quickly, guys, so you can uh, get a clear visual of what it is I'm talking about. Um, 
So we've got, we're gonna say this is our left shoulder. Down here we have our head. Whoops. So the head down here, and then this is gonna be our right shoulder forming over there. So something like this is what we're talking about. And we've got some nice synchronicity here because we have the daily trend line support coming in. Let's just draw that in. So we've got that 117.60, back into those 117s. Watch this pattern. This has got potential, I think, as we head into, uh, into the new year here. So watching for 117 test, 117.50, 117.90, bullish reversal patterns. And then we can start to think about moving up into uh, the mid to late 120s in terms of sterling. That's one to, uh, to keep an eye on. Dollar yen has rolled over, taken out the trend channel support. So I'm looking now for dollar yen to test 136 on the downside. On the daily time frame, I'll just show you what, uh, what we're looking at in terms of the sequence here. We've got a nice five wave sequence subdividing nicely. One, two, three, four, and five gives us 136 as our downside target there in terms of the uh, the dollar yen. So once we clear uh, 137.70s, 137.50, that's the uh, the all clear signal to target that 136 test in terms of dollar yen. Let's move to uh, some of these antipodeans. Got some nice setups here. Aussie dollar held trend channel support extending to the upside. So my target now is towards 69 in terms of the Aussie dollar. So any pullbacks into the pivot here and the ascending trend channel support 60, just below the 67 handle, bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, targeting that, uh, that 69 level. We've got the high volume nodes here on the daily time frame, 69.30s. That's going to be a key test for the Aussie dollar with a similar scenario in the Kiwi. Kiwi actually even a better setup. I shared this one uh, through the Tick Mill uh, Trading View account. We were just looking basically for a breakout from uh, this uh, triangle pattern. A nice close through there, 6160s. And that gives us a target now at 63, which we are heading towards. And that's 60, uh, 63 is going to be an interesting test. I'd be anticipate, anticipating a pullback from there because that is the uh, 131 extension of this, uh, of this from this swing low here at the 6730s. Let's get our next upside target here in terms of the Kiwi. And I'd like to see 60. So you can see a similar scenario here, similar to that Sterling setup. We, if we can get up into the 6450s and then get a pullback it back into the 60 level that finds support, then we have another inverse head and shoulders scenario developing there. Again, that's probably one to look for into, uh, into the la latter part of this year, early part of next year. This could be a uh, an in very interesting setup in terms of the, the Kiwi obviously has implications for the dollar simile with cable as well. So these are ones to, uh, to keep an eye on. I'll be updating anyway as we progress. Uh, looking at gold, we were looking for a correction to develop. And what do we see here? Let's... So always we are looking initially at the symmetry swings. You can see we traded down to it, we broke it, but we held back above it. So I'd suggest now that we have a wave four low in place and we are looking for a fifth wave extension here in terms of gold. Because of the nature of this basing pattern, I'd anticipate what we get with gold is something like this now. So, and, to, and just exceeding before getting another another pullback in terms of gold. So I think uh, certainly back through this pivot here at 1765, we look for a retest 1792, and then on to test 1800 level. That's the high volume node on the weekly chart. And then from there, I think we could see another corrective move. But again, you can see the potential for an inverse head and shoulders here on the daily time frame. So if we can get up into that 1800 level, and then we get pullback three wave into hold then 1680s as support. You can see that uh, potential for an inverse head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, and potential right shoulders. So you can start to see these patterns 
per, uh, permeating through the markets at the moment. Obviously, we have to wait for the confirmations, but certainly looking interesting. Silver traded to the target area at 21.70, and I share this through the tick mill account. So I've been looking now for a three-way correct move back into 1990s level I'm watching. If we can get back into 1990 and watch bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, and then we're looking for a test up into this new trend channel resistance that would bring us up into $23.20, weekly projected rate, uh, sorry, weekly trend line resistance, 25.20s. So I see upside here in silver and uh, watching that 1990 crude oil creators took out the range support. On those, on those OPEC headlines. So now looking for a test of 73.30 versus the swing high here at 82. And then from there, I watch the bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for move up to test trend channel resistance initially just below the 80 handle. Bitcoin, not doing much of anything really. As we hold this support area, we are looking, we have a target above us here, range resistance gives us 18,000. Bit, very tricky at the moment trading Bitcoin, obviously, because the headline event risk, uh, given the uh, the various frauds and liquidity issues. Ultimately, what I'm looking for, like I've said, repeat week in, week out at the moment, 12,185. A test down there, I will be looking to accumulate longer term positions in terms of Bitcoin. Uh, a couple of others here just to wrap things up. Kiwi Cab shared this through the um, Technical Trading View account. We were looking for a hold of 8180 as support, got that, we've extended, first target achieved. Now I'm looking for move up into the weekly trend line resistance at the 84 level from there. Obviously pay attention to that. This Kiwi CAD trades as a, a proxy for risk in terms of uh, the equity markets. So we're getting a similar type of pattern that we're seeing in terms of equity markets. And again, when we're testing these key levels, I uh, really want to pay attention as we if, if we if we synchronize across these markets, Euro cable, uh, the um, S&P 500, uh, the dollar index. Now we can start to think about this Kiwi CAD as well. And uh, we want to see how these markets react at these key inflection points in uh, in the coming week. Last but not least, let's take a look at the Swissy. Didn't, uh, didn't take the uh, symmetry swing target but we have traded to the downside so i'm looking for any pullback into 9520 trend channel resistance downside objective 9140 for the swissy again that swissy trading that 9140 when the dollar index is looking at 104 105 really want to pay attention to how we respond there noteworthy as well that we are sitting on the weekly trend line here in terms of uh, the swissy so we're testing some key levels here. Uh, well, we're about to, in my mind anyway, test some key levels in these markets as we, uh, as the US comes back from Thanksgiving and we head into this year end period. I'm expecting a little bit of volatility before uh, before we straighten things out here. So um, that concludes this week's whistle stop tour of the markets that I'm tracking. Hopefully you have, you've got a good feel there for what it is I'm looking at, where I see the potential correlations and setups developing. Any questions, feel free to drop them into the chat box. One thing I would actually, one thing I did want to uh, just give you guys, um, there is still the potential here. As we If we hold support in terms of this dollar index, we can always do a double correction. I talk about these, uh, when I talk about a double correction, this is what I mean. So if we hold support, we can still trade up into that 108.20 and then still target our downside 104.30 level. So just to be something to be aware of, we could do a double correction, would still be bearish, and 108.20s would be the cap there. Similarly, with the euro, we can see that we can still do a double correction here with the euro. So until we take out these prior highs, there is always the potential that we do a double correction. So that could have us trading 101.90s. But again, that's still bullish, and we're still sitting within the scope of the wave two, uh, the wave two consolidation. So as long as we hold that, that's our invalidate, or for my strategy anyway, that's the invalidation point. So as long as we hold there, I'm still bullish. Always just something to become cognizant of that potential for uh, double corrective pattern. So I've got a request here to take a look at Adidas. Let's uh, let's do that. And Adidas one D. Hmm. 
I'm going to quote on that. Try that. There we go. Okay, so clearly impulsive move there. Let's see what we've got. So on the weekly, we've got this descending trend channel. Boom and boom. So this move obviously looks impulsive. We've taken out a couple of key swing highs here. So what I'd anticipate is the potential to do something like this. So three wave corrective move, and then an extension to the upside. Um, let me just get the retracement tool. So yeah, something back into $115. Watch the bullish reversal patterns there, 115 to 110, a little high volume area here. So I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. First target is always going to be the 127 extension, 149. Then we have that area there. 150 would be the target zone initially. I think that's going to coincide yet yeah, with that weekly trend line resistance. So any pullbacks into 115, 110, bullish reversal patterns, target 150 on the upside. Equally, if we can close, if you get a close back through 137, um, certainly on the daily time frame, then you could look to engage again on the long side. 150 is the uh, is the upside objective at the moment. Does that help, Justice? Okay, I can't see any other questions coming through. So if there aren't any other questions, uh, one thing I will do is I'll share the link to access the uh, Tickmill strategy group where I post that daily trading plan for the S&P 500. For those that are interested, just request access and I'll get you into that group and you get that daily trade plan. I also post some other interesting institutional insights in there from big uh, tier one investment banks, Goldman Sachs, et cetera. Uh, some useful information there. And last but not least, I will leave you with the Trading View, Tickmill Trading View account where I post uh, the daily trade setups for those that are interested to follow along. Obviously, like I say, reaching some interesting inflection points here. So the updates are going to, uh, are going to certainly going to be key over the coming week and in, week, sorry, and into year end. Okay, I'm going to wrap things up here. As always, traders plan the trade, trade the plan. Most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.